Welcome back. Six minutes past the hour. It's Earth Day. Germany is getting, on these nice summer days now, as much as 50% of their electricity from solar power, since they have a very innovative program that puts solar panels on about half of all German households. Um, in Hawaii, in the United States, it's pushing 15% of households. Uh, this stuff is coming to scale. Wind power now in, it, it represents 20% of the total electricity contribution in Iowa and Texas, of all places. It's growing. These, these, these technologies are solid. They're economical. And when you consider the subsidies that we give to the fossil fuel industry, if you were to remove those subsidies, they're cheaper than oil, coal, or natural gas. So why would anybody be pitching the fossil fuels of the 19th and 20th centuries? Mark J. Perry, a scholar with the American Enterprise Institute, AEI, professor of economics and finance at the University of Michigan on the Flint campus and creator and editor of the economics blog Carpe Diem, is with us, uh, AEI.org, of course, the website. Mark, welcome. Yeah, hi, Tom. So, wh- you know, I read your, your, uh, your uh, love note to fossil fuels, why? Why? Why should we be embracing the the energy source of previous centuries, particularly when that, those energy sources produce waste materials that cause cancer, that kill us, that cause asthma, that that make our lives miserable? When we've got new clean technologies that could create all kinds of jobs and could power the world? Yeah. Well, it's just that the new renewable energies, just still uh, on a scientific and economic basis, just really aren't viable compared to fossil fuels. Tell that to the I was Germans using in the blog post that I think you read. I was using the Department of Energy's forecast out to the year 2040. So based on the uh, Energy Department, you know, the government's forecast, they're predicting that even, um, you know, 25 years from now in the year 2040, that we're going to rely on fossil fuels for more than 81% of our energy sources and renewables are going to be less than 10 percent so. yeah this is, that assumes nothing changes i mean we have it, it, this this country can do amazing things when we decide to look at how we mobilize to fight world war ii we could we could flip ours there is enough solar power landing on the united states in one day to easily power every home and business in this country for a year if we simply could efficiently catch it and and well, the the efficiency of these things is is up to the point where, as I said, it's less expensive than fossil fuels. Why don't we stop subsidizing the oil barons and foreign countries that that hate us, and start subsidizing jobs in the United States? Well, I think that's a little bit of uh, you know some misinformation that the oil and gas companies do not get any direct subsidies; they get some tax breaks that other manufacturers get that I don't We don't protect the shipping lanes from Saudi Arabia to here? Well, sure. We do that with our tax dollars, hundreds of billions of dollars in 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 our navy and air force. Uh we're not we're not providing protect we're we're not providing you know with the oil depletion allowance is still there as as you know for every oil, gallon of oil that they can pump out or barrel that they can take a little more money. We're selling oil we're, you know, we from public lands, we're selling oil for like pennies on the on the barrel to oil companies that are turning around and selling it for 50 bucks a barrel. We're subsidizing oil companies in 16 ways to Sunday, Mark. Yeah, but it's not like the direct taxpayer subsidies that, uh, you know, solar companies have gotten in terms of loan guarantees and direct well, subsidies. There's, but there's there's huge subsidies in, in as much as we are not captured. We're not, the fossil fuel industry is the only industry in the world. Correct me if I'm wrong. If you can come up with another alternative, I, I'd be, love to hear it. But as far as I know, it's the only industry in the world that does not pay to dispose of its waste. The, the, when, when power plants burn coal, and, and all that waste goes into the air, and some of it is very poisonous and toxic, and, and much of it is carbon dioxide, which is poisonous and toxic to our environment, to our, to our atmosphere. They are not paying for that. They're not paying for the cost of the cancers, the, the, the estimated ten to 50,000 cancers in the United States every year as a consequence of people inhaling the results of, of fossil fuel combustion. They're not paying for the cost of, of our protecting, you know, fighting wars abroad to protect oil sources, oil resources in the Middle East. They're not paying for any of that stuff. If they had to pay for that, the price of oil would be out of sight in the United States if we simply made fossil fuels cost what they're actually costing us. Well, yes, but it's just that, I mean, um, so why don't we do that? energies are very, very expensive as well and can't really survive on their own without a huge amount of, you know, taxpayer life support. That's no longer so true. I'm showing. 
Mark, you, 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 you know, that might have been the case 15 or 20 years ago, but that's no longer true. In the country of Germany, Denmark, I mean, Hawaii, it's all over. You've got for-profit power companies in Hawaii try to stop Hawaiians from putting panels on their roof, charging them, you know, $100 a month if they put solar panels on their roof. Why would they do that? Yeah, yeah, but I mean, also we have to recognize that because of the switch from coal to natural gas, that our CO2 emissions on a per capita basis are really the lowest since the 1960s. So we get some benefits from the fossil fuel industry by providing cheap, uh, abundant natural gas to replace coal, which has brought carbon dioxide emissions down. So there's that environmental uh, benefit that I think we have to recognize. As yeah, well. and, and I'll acknowledge that. But on the other hand, the the natural gas companies are not, again, they're, they're, they're internalizing profits and externalizing costs. They're not, they're not you know, Oklahoma, earth, three or four earthquakes every single day. The natural gas companies are not making people whole when their houses get damaged. These fracking uh, wastes that are re-injected into these fracking wells all over the country, people are not being compensated when their well water goes by, bad. The, 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 the coal industry in West Virginia, the stuff that they use to clean the coal that smells like licorice, and I forgot the name of it, that contaminated that river, and 300,000 people had no water for, you know, and, and even now their, their bodies are filled with stuff that may well cause cancer or birth defects. The coal company's not paying for that. It, we, we need to be capturing these expenses that they are dumping on us. Yeah, I mean, well, there's a cost to any kind of um, energy production. I mean, the, the uh, you know, wind energy, for example, is very, very land intensive, as, and so is solar. And uh, wind farms kill a lot of birds. There's environmental damage in that sense. So, I mean, there's always going to be a cost to society. Skyscrapers uh, kill birds. Energy. Actually, skyscra- skyscrapers in the United States kill a lot more birds than wind power, number one. Number two, they're coming up with, with uh, wind power designs that don't kill birds, that, you know, from, from these new scalloped blades that, that are actually 37% more efficient because they, they mimic a humpback whale's flippers, uh, but, but to, to uh, things that have little whistles in them that, that uh, discourage birds. I mean, that, that, again, that's, that's, that was a concern 15 years ago. It pretty much isn't anymore. Well, I just think people have to, you know, be prepared for the fact that according to the government's own forecast, that for the next quarter century, fossil fuels are going to continue to provide the large majority of our energy. If we do nothing. Our, our economy and fuel our homes or heat our homes and fuel our, our vehicles. Right, and if we do nothing. are going to continue to play a very, very small and minor role in energy in the U.S. If we do nothing. If, on the other yeah. hand, we were to do what Germany did, which didn't cost the government anything, by the way, um, and 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 put solar panels on a third of the houses in the country, we could we could pr- probably pretty much eliminate our need for most non-transportation fossil fuels. Yeah, I mean, well, it's, if if we can get um, you know solar and wind scalable, and so that they're cost effective relative to other types and sources of energy, they are. They are. Okay, but then it seems like the government is forecasting that they're going to continue to provide less than 10%. That's because they're assuming that Republicans are going to continue to obstruct any attempt to promote clean energy. Well, I mean, they make a lot of assumptions in their models, but I'm just saying... I think that's a reasonable assumption, don't you? Well, I mean, these are the government's own. This is Obama's energy department. Of- yeah, and they're, and they're looking at, you know, the Republicans have blocked every effort to subsidize... Solar, solar or wind, or or promoted in any way, or for that matter, to recapture the external costs to fossil fuels. I mean, there, there's been a, a number of pieces of legislation to do one or the other or both, and the Republicans filibuster them in the Senate, fight them in the House, fight them at the state level. Anyway, yeah, Mark, well, I mean, I think the future looks bright, and I think fossil fuels are part of that, and I think people should be ready to accept that, and I think we'll continue to get the majority of our fuel from low-cost sources like uh, coal and oil and natural gas. Okay, Mark, the last word is yours. Mark Perry, Mark J. Perry, scholar at AEI. AEI.org is the website. Mark, thanks for dropping by. Thanks, Tom. Good talk.